The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. Fur coats line the racks of clothing stores, with customers purchasing them for thousands of dollars. But the price that the animals have to pay for people to wear fur is the ultimate one. Unimaginable torture and exploitation, followed by a brutal, bloody end to their lives. Despite the repulsive horrors behind such apparel, fur is still a part of the fashion industry. Why? On today's Stop Animal Cruelty, in the first in a three-part series, we feature the new documentary, Skin Trade, which seeks to answer this very question. The film, which has already garnered several awards, is directed by Shannon Keith, a vegan animal rights attorney from the U.S. and founder of the nonprofit animal welfare organization, Animal Rescue Media and Education. constantly being tortured and abused for the fur trade and I couldn't believe that fur as fashion was actually making a comeback on the catwalks so I decided to make this film to educate the public about animals used for fashion. The film's important message is bolstered by the appearance of an array of prominent fashion designers, celebrities and government dignitaries in the documentary. They include, among others, U.S. Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Academy Award-nominated vegan actor James Cromwell, and four-time U.S. National Basketball Association champion and vegan John Sally. We now present excerpts from Skin Trade. When you get into the area of furs or animals being killed for clothing, you just remove that level of logic, you remove any level of compassion, you remove the possibility of sustenance, and that's the problem. When I first set out to make a documentary about the fur industry, I knew that consumers were being defrauded. But I had no idea to what extent the fur industry would go to to lie and deceive people in order to get them to buy a fur coat. From history and culture all the way down to environmentalism, the fur industry will say anything to get people to buy fur. They're not electrocuting. Foxes are not electrocuted by having a probe put up their anus. It's almost impossible to do, but that's what they say. That they, I mean, can you imagine? So keeper. Can they rest assured that the animals were in fact killed in very humane methods? Oh yeah, I think yeah. If we're spending thirty thousand dollars on a fur coat, we can be assured that the animals were killed humanely. The ranchers have bred them for many years and have played with the recessive genes, and there's many different colors. And a lot of times people don't, they think, for example, that this is an Arctic fox, and it's not. This is actually a red fox. I saw the footage that Matt Rizell had taken in that fur farm that he worked out of with that, um, that white fox that was being anally electrocuted uh, for, the fur, for the fur coat. And um, I was, I mean, I was, sh I was shocked. I mean, I, I started crying. I've seen it with my own eyes. I worked on a fur farm. I worked undercover for four months during the pelting season on a fox farm in Illinois. You don't get them the first time. What are we going to say if you don't get them the first time? Well, they'll get, they know what's coming. See if you, you slightly jolt them just a little bit. When we look at their trade journals, they're very honest about how they do it. We get our information from their own sources. Right on their genitals. The other clip on their ear. It is only at the retail end when they're trying to sell this stuff to the public that they lie and try to cover it all up. Try to tell you it's humane, try to tell you the animals were killed in a nice way, or that they're treated well. Like Everything that we see here or... is raised to be used for that, like chicken, like cows, like anything. Else. Yeah. And not in the wild. They're not they're trapped not or anything trapped. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good.
Whether they're trapped wild is such unbelievable cruelty the deaths of these animals lead, or they're farm raised, which is this euphemism for basically little prison cells. Uh, these animals are living on top of each other until they're just at whatever maximum size that they're perfect for coats. There's no good way to make fur. I mean, whether it's harvested, harvested, that's a cool catchphrase, in the wild, or it's raised on farms. It's another cool catchphrase. Oh no, we raised it on farms as if there's something at all civilized about that or humane. Um, no matter where it's coming from, if you had to really sort of look at, at where it was and why, I, I think you might make another choice. Stop Animal Cruelty will return after this brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is the Stop Animal Cruelty series on Supreme Master Television, featuring excerpts from the documentary Skin Trade. We now continue with more from this award-winning film. To know that if they buy something, even if it just has a fur trim, that cruelty was a component of the manufacture of that product. The customers who are asking the right questions and saying, well, tell me, how are these fur coats produced? Or where are these animals um, being raised? And how are they being killed for their fur? And a lot of times the retailers are giving them false answers, saying, oh, they're injected, they don't feel anything. And nothing could be further from the truth. But, uh, there's a Federal Trade Commission that so there are laws, are there laws that oversee that kind of humane treatment yeah, thing? Yeah. When we set out to try to get some justice for these animals, it took like a couple of days just to track down who was responsible for watching these fur farms. Every agency we went to was pointing the finger at someone else. No, they're regulating. No, they're regulating them. There are no laws controlling them. And in fact, the uh, trade of exotic animals is second only to drug dealing and firearms. <laughs> I mean, it's a huge industry. If you saw somebody on the street electrocuting a dog, you'd go to jail for it, first of all. And people would, all the neighbors said, that person's a sick person. The cops would come, there would be out, out, people would be outraged. When we look at fur coats, we see murder, and we see the people who are wearing it as accomplices, and we see the people who do the business as a perpetrator. There are no laws protecting these animals, and there are no um, inspectors going onto these farms. The only way to find out what's going on is to get inside and see for yourself. This is Bear. Bear had been caught in steel jaw traps, probably set for coyotes. This paw was nearly severed, and it'll never be the same. Cracks and bleeds still in the wintertime, despite the fact that he's had extensive medical care. Because no one was checking the traps either on a regular basis, he laid there for about three days, caught in the traps. And they just, do they just like put him to sleep like a dog or something? Of course. <laughs> I don't know, it's coyote. This is coyote. Yeah. And this wow. is also from Denmark, or? Oh, no, this is from the uh, United States. The United States. Yeah, it's me too. And these are raised or trapped? This is trapped. Trapped, yeah. yeah. When I see someone wearing coyote fur trim or a coat. To me, it's they're wearing a dog. They're wearing, how can they? The reason why we're putting them in the truck alive, these animals will be uh, killed in skunt. But when they're warm, they all the skin a lot better, so we're gonna be taking them in today alive. What the industry tries to tell the public about how um, they take good care of these animals on fur farms because they wouldn't have a good product that, you know, quality fur dictates quality care for the animals. They treat them better than humans while they're alive because yeah. they cannot be scratched, they cannot be dead. Right. It couldn't be further from the truth. And I'm at Dan Ashelman's fox farm and uh, right now I'm in the process of watering the new barn which is 187 cages of um, mostly all silver foxes, one male and one female in each cage. And I know they haven't been watered for over a week. All 
of the watering dishes are bone dry. Dan Ashelman told me that watering them once every other week is enough. And you can see that they're thirsty. There's nothing humane about taking an animal, keeping it in a cage until it grows big enough and it's got enough fur that you can electrocute it and kill it and skin it. How is that humane? Do they electrocute the animals on fur farms? No, because it, uh, uh, I will tell you an answer, uh, a straight answer about that. It's impossible to electrocute them because it will change the... Um, when you electrocute the electricity, and that will change the, the fur. There's no way to get fur and have it be humane. There just is no way. Our deep thanks, Shannon Keith, and all others involved in the production of Skin Trade for allowing us to share your documentary with our global viewers. Let us all do our part to end the heartless fur industry by always refusing to purchase fur and animal skin. May we also lead a life free of animal products by quickly adopting the conscientious and harmonious organic vegan lifestyle. I'm Shannon Keith. Be a veg, go green to save the planet. For more details on Skin Trade, please visit www.skintradethemovie.com. The Skin Trade DVD is available at the same website. For more information on animal rescue media education, please visit www.arme.tv. We appreciate your company today on our program. Please join us again for part two of our three-part presentation of Skin Trade next Tuesday on Stop Animal Cruelty. Enlightening Entertainment is next after Noteworthy News. May heaven's light illuminate the lives of all beings on our planet. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.